Greetings folk, Flying Doctor here. Hope you're doing okay. Now if you watched my last video, you'll have seen how disappointed I was in NVIDIA's DLSS, Deep Learning Super Sampling. It's supposed to be there to increase the number of frames we're seeing per second, also to give us more smoothness, but that's not what was happening. I was rejoicing over the fact that we could have multiple monitors. Yeah, as usual, expecting a huge amount from the sim, but DLSS just wasn't doing anything. Well, I've got news for you folks, because some three days ago, NVIDIA issued a new driver update, and that driver update will improve your DLS experience in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Will it make a difference? It will make a difference, let me tell you. This is really exciting stuff. If you love flying low, if you love making the best of the sceneries that you've got around you, when you get to that point where your graphics card's getting eaten up, you're going to find that you're going to hit anything up to double number of the frames that you were getting before. Let's dive into it. So, new driver, it's 517.48, it was released on the 27th of September. And obviously you're going to be having, you have to run an NVIDIA card, you need to keep your drivers updated, but if you haven't, go across to GeForce or go across the NVIDIA site and pick up the latest driver three days ago as of recording today at 517.48. Follow the instructions I just did and express installation, no problems there. Number of people just asking, how do I find the DLSS settings in the options? Well, it's under here, anti-aliasing. You can see it there. It's standard is TAA, temporal anti-aliasing. But you can see NVIDIA DLSS written below there. If you just click on the right, you'll find it straight away. I have it set to quality. Uh, but if you cycle, you can be off FXALA, DLAA, TAA, and then back again to uh, NVIDIA DLSS. So here's all you need to know, folks. I've organized a flight path over one of the toughest areas that I'm aware of in Microsoft Flight Simulator with add-on scenery. We're flying into London City Airport, which is by Orbix. They produce some additional scenery for the wider city area, and we're also using Orbix Central Great Britain. So this usually will chew my simulator right up, and we are gonna fly this simple course we're going to keep the altitude the same, the speed the same, and we're going to see what happens. We're keeping all other factors as constant as we can. I'm using Microsoft Flight Simulator's broken clouds in the weather engine, and the time of day is 12 o'clock. So here we go. I run in 4K, as you can see. I run with temporal anti-aliasing at 100%, and I work with high-end rather than ultra. So as you can see here, I'm ascending to 1,000 feet, and I'm going to load in 60 knots. We've got our course that's just appearing here, and the next time that I see you, uh, you shall just see me commenting on the combinations that we're looking at. So first we're gonna look at 1,000 feet, 60 knots, uh, temporal anti-aliasing versus uh, DLSS, and see what kind of difference we get. Okay, so what are we learning? Well, you can see here, left-hand side, we have got our standard setup with TAA. I'm using high-end graphics at 1,000 feet and 60 knots. Right-hand side is the DLSS. And, uh, of course, you've just seen it turn there. Things aren't quite as matched as I would like, both in the navigational course, although they're pretty close to each other. But also, uh, you can see the lighting's very different on the right-hand side. Now, I've got two minds on this. Is this the DLSS that's working? Uh, there are times I think the DLSS looks a lot more contrasty, but bright and vi vibrant, much more attractive. The pools of light in DLSS seem to um, seem to catch my eye a bit more. Uh, but also, unfortunately, with the cloud setting, even though I've raised the base of the clouds to around about 1,500 foot to make sure we don't end up flying in mist, um, for some reason, well, the one set of clouds is never the same on one day compared to the other, so the clouds are different. But um, apart from that, I do, I do see a difference, but I'm not sure whether it's actually due to the DLSS. Main thing, looking at the frame rate, of course, is it looks pretty similar in places between, you know, two couple of frames different. I actually found when I scanned through before, I was looking at about five frames uh, per second difference at the most. You got 50s and 53s there, but by the time you move your eye from one readout to the other, 
uh, you're likely to miss it. I think this area, oddly enough, now this is on the edge of the scenery that Orbix has created um, for the airport. This is where I was seeing the greatest difference, so 44 to 50. We can just scratch through a little bit to perhaps where I'd anticipate things to be tough. Let's just go right on the edge of the airport there. And yeah, 46, 47 there, 51, 50 there. So yeah, there is a, a slight difference. But overall, at 1,000 feet and 60 knots, which is where I think sensible people might fly, I like to fly the sim as if I've... You know, as if I'm wanting to see how how quickly, how much I can break it, how much detail I can get. But for most people, this is totally acceptable, I think, either way. We'll scratch on a little bit further, shall we? Because I happen to know the other challenge tends to be, and I will show you this. I have got a horizontal readout as opposed to a vertical readout. This tends to be um, uh, quite intense here as we're looking out into London. Yeah, 45, and it's just going dipping below 50 there. So difficult to see, um, but I think there is a definite difference. And I'm not really, as I say, experiencing a huge amount of difference when it comes to stutter. Let's just move this forward here. And I'm interested to come through Canary Wharf. Um, it was one of the more demanding areas. Let's just see what we've got there. Yeah, so 40, 43 was the lowest there, 50 there. So, yeah, that's what we've got. We can have a look at the horizontal uh, for a second. So this is the horizontal view just coming uh, into the airport, as you could see. 53 at the top, 51. And again, it's a sort of similar picture. Um, do realise that, obviously, I'm filming a lot of cloud here. Uh, but I'm just zooming, just having a little bit of a play. We'll see. Yeah, 49.952. I'm going to overfly the airport, see what we've got here on our frames per second. 48 to 50. Yeah, so it's between around 2 and 5 frames per second at this kind of uh, distance. And um, let's just have a look. Now, the reason that I did the horizontal, apart from it gives us a full breadth of uh, sceneries because I want to see what this area around here Canary Wharf is like so 50 place 47 uh, but again not huge let's just move it on here uh, we do the equivalent of a low pass you hang on have a look because what I'm going to do next is this is run of the mill not really seeing a huge difference at a thousand feet I thought to myself well let's test it and after all I do tend to fly pretty close and uh, and push everything as much as possible and I thought what we'll do is we'll drop down to 500 feet and we'll travel at 100 knots so that means that we're having to obviously render a lot of detail uh, and we're having to do it um, quicker so that might be interesting so we fly over Canary Wharf here yeah again 4950 you know it's probably it's it's in, in in all fairness it's probably something like a 10 percent difference but when you think if you're able to get 50 frames per second that's not really a huge number of frames that's five frames maximum um it can make the difference uh, between what is playable and what isn't I've certainly demonstrated that before but yeah looking through here 51 on the top 48 49 on the bottom so not much to say uh in respect to this let's have a look and see what happens when we uh, increase and press the sim even more so here we are now we are really pushing the sim so we're at 4k as usual on the left hand side we're an ultra at 500 foot and 100 knots so this is really going to pressurize uh, things and on the right hand side we've got our dlss working exactly the same settings on ultra now, first, two th first thing is I know no two clouds are the same on the same day at the same time or whatever. Um, but uh, I can see, you know, differences to lighting and clouds. I'm only assuming really that's not going to have a huge impact. I do find that the right hand image has a little bit more dynamic range and a little bit more contrasty, but not in an unpleasant way. Not quite too gamey, but not far off. She left probably looks a little bit more realistic, if I'm honest. In terms of the frame rates, you can see straight away here, 
and uh, I think that we've got some slightly different wind condition that's meaning that the yaw in the helicopter on the right hand side is slightly more to the right that's why the images are looking different but um, we've got 30 31 on the left hand side and we've got 36 37 on the right hand side with DLSS so we're seeing that's where you're five frames per second you know if you're saving five frames per second and you're down to this kind of frame rate it just can make disproportionately a much smoother um, kind of impression as you're playing through the game again just a bit concerned that the lighting is very different but we're just going to scratch scratch through and um, see what we can find so let's just move through i know that this is a particularly taxing part so 32 to 36 37 bizarre uh, why the clouds are so different um, but uh, if we move forward here let's just get to the edge of the airport 31 place 35 okay and 30 and 32 as we're just moving further in here and then suddenly left hand side did you see that I'm whacking great frame drop there 15 11 to 15 and quite happily on 30 here so yeah that's a really good demonstration and in fact it looks as if the sim's struggling to to kind of manage or process the inputs in terms of controls because there's a lot more movement in the autopilot on the left hand side things are looking quite unstable than on the right there you go so there we are i talked about being double the frame rate using dlss this is 16 frames per second on the left ultra 500 foot 100 knots a standard settings as i would call them versus 37 38 that is over double the frame rate and on the left hand side actually it looks like the clouds are far less complicated for the sim to draw than the ones on the right so even more so yeah really significant um, differences going on there i'm also looking for just how smooth it is i have to say that on the left hand side it's still at 16 frames per second doesn't look too bad but it's that really powerful frame drop that um that dls seems to have rescued us from it and it is an ongoing issue because I, I do really enjoy orbic sceneries but it is an ongoing issue when you get these massive frame drops i also understand it can be about read times on hard drives you know and it's we've, we've haven't we we've dealt with stutters for a whole host of time and found all kinds of ways around them uh, but there you go just moving on to the right hand side there and i'm in really interested to see this so 36 plays 1920s will come out the other side of canary wharf i'll show you i'm really interested in canary wharf and, and what's going to go on there obviously the reflections are stronger on the left than they are on the right um but there'll be other things the sims drawing on the right it's a little bit stuttery it's very stuttery on the left and a little bit stuttery on the right but not half as bad and um the uh the, the scenery seems is still popping out so yeah 30 plays 17 so well that's a big improvement isn't it we're going to have a look and see what else we can find just looking on the horizontal so folks yes this is our horizontal view coming in same layout as before um, what I would say is you've got, yes, the higher performing DLSS quality, 35, 33, had a 38, 32 a minute ago. Now we're going to fly in and we're going to see the same dip in frame rate that we saw earlier. Don't forget, it's the same, it's exactly the same flight in. It's just um, with a kind of, uh, you know, the horizontal view just gives us a better scenery reference as to what the sim might be trying to chew through. So I happen to know here that things are going to get difficult. This um, cloud's certainly not impressing me. That such variation in in the cloud. That's the sim internally doing that. Um, but as we shall see here, we'll see that massive strutter, that stutter, that drop in frame rate that uh, under TA TAA um, just ruins the experience. And indeed, if you look at the autopilot uh, as the uh, sim begins to struggle, it genuinely the autopilot is struggling to process. Uh, the inputs and I think that's why you get this lack of stability uh, with uh, the helicopter meanwhile on the top things are much more well preserved so here we are on the top of 30 at the top 29 at the bottom but just wait for it because here it comes there you go drop down to 5 6 there then 24 and then 15 then 13 and meanwhile we're all steady on 30 on the top so yes and that becomes unplayable on the bottom there 
that would be you would be struggling to relate the inputs to what's happening in the sim with the aircraft because that's uh, aptly shown by the it's even happening with the autopilot which is happening at lightning speed of course so yeah there you go couldn't really get much clearer evidence from that also it kind of helps me just to show it looks absolutely beautiful um, both both scenes look beautiful but the top I think for me looks better the DLSS there's something richer about the scene as we move forward I'm quite interested in this you, you'll see now what's going to happen we're actually going to do an extremely low pass uh, kind of uh, on, on the top of a building here but what we're going to do is we're going to take in on the left uh, we shall uh, see Canary Wharf so yes there's the um, well it's actually the Millennium Dome I think it's the O2 Arena now but uh, yes so yeah just moving ahead 37 place 16 so there we are double double frame rate um, more than double so you know, that's what I was saying before this is absolutely stunning here and uh, congratulations to uh, NVIDIA uh, for well, getting that driver out there and working in partnership with Microsoft Flight Simulator. My thoughts are I'm sure that Orbix is uh, really, really pleased that it's got the simulator now is able to show up all of its scenery in all of its beauty. That's, you know, we pay for our scenery for this reason. Just, um, just lift yourself off the seat a sec, there you go. That was deliberately close. You'll see, still see the scenery popping out, which is something I don't like. It's done on the left and on the bottom there, uh, on the left as well. And uh, it's not something I particularly like, but um, look at that. 18 frames per second place, 36, 37. And um, it, to me, I would be saying the volumetric clouds on the top are going to put even more demand on the sim than on the bottom. So, um, folks, I'll just leave you there. Enjoy the final um, phases of uh, the flight. Uh, we're going to come over and um, we're going to be, oh, there we are. Sometimes you get a, a little stutter on both of the sims, uh, well, you know, both versions at the same time. But, uh, yes, we're just uh, flying here across to, uh, I think it's towards the, can I make it out? I should be able to make it out. Anyway, I'm wittering now. I'm wittering now, folks. Um, so uh, take care, um, stay safe, and I hope you enjoyed that. So yes, with, um, look at that, 37, 38 place 18. Uh, so yes, um, as we come through London here, uh, there's the Shard on the left. And uh, you can see Tower Bridge on the left there on the top. And very, very smooth. Uh, just I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And so just to remember, a reminder, make sure your NVIDIA drivers are up to date. And then you should, um, you should be absolutely fine and dandy to go but of course the caveat is that well every every system's different every system's different but uh, yeah really in uh, enjoying the um, DLSS at the top here and what could be happening is that the DLSS is freeing up resources so that the weather engine is able to do an even better job I suspect that you know certainly because um, uh, you can see we're limited by GPU at the bottom if you just look below that frame rate and it's continually flashing on the top between being limited by GPU and thread. So as we just pull around with St Paul's just uh, in front of us there, just wish you all the best. Take care, stay safe. So don't forget uh, to like, to subscribe. See you next time.